Off-platform monetization is the number one way for you to succeed as a creator. There are new monetization tools being introduced what seems like every day to help creators earn more, but YouTube has been doing it at the highest level for a decade, and it's still incredibly difficult to make enough money from AdSense revenue among the other monetization tools on the platform to have a reliable, consistent income from month to month. I love YouTube, and today we're going to talk about exactly what you can do to better use a tool like YouTube to grow your premium video platform. Well, hey everyone, my name is Daniel Kazmala. I'm a video expert and creator here at Uscreen, and in my time here, I've helped us gain thousands of subscribers, millions of views on our video content aimed at helping creators just like you grow and make more money online. My co-host today is is here. I'm going to bring her up now. It's our Uscreen's Director of Marketing, Jamie Myers. Jamie, welcome to the stream. Thank you, Daniel. Hey, everybody. Super excited to be here. We're here to talk to you about how to tune your YouTube subscribers into paying members with Uscreen. Everybody's dream, more money in your pockets. So we're excited to dive into that today. So who is this for? This live stream is really for creators who want to grow your paying audience, have a predictable income, have a smaller paying member count than your YouTube subscribers and have content you can repurpose and make more money with. We're going to walk you through the actionable steps to turn your YouTube channel into a powerful sales funnel that converts. We'll show you how to set up your landing page with Uscreen's native design features, use your YouTube channel as a high converting marketing funnel to your paid content hub and optimize your content strategy. If you have specific questions, stick around. We'll do some Q&A at the end. Definitely pop them in that comment box. We'll be paying attention to that, and then we'll pull them at the end for some live Q&A. Oh, this is me. This is me. I've, <laughs> I've got too many windows going on the back end here. Um, so like Jamie said, we're going to go through all these amazing things today. But the reason we're here is because you're frustrated with YouTube, right? Like it's taking more time to make less money and you want a stable, predictable income that you control. This webinar is going to tell you exactly what you need to do. Set up your landing page with Uscreen's native design features. Use your YouTube channel as a high converting marketing funnel to your paid content hub and optimize your content strategy to get more paying members to your streaming site. So these actionable steps will help you turn your YouTube channel into a powerful sales funnel that converts subscribers to your own paid platform. So um, if I go to the next slide, this kind of walks you through exactly what we're talking about today. Um, and we're going to tell you, create a landing page for your premium video streaming service that converts switch to an abundance mindset with YouTube uh, and why you need to do that. Adopt a YouTube marketing funnel, which I'm really actually very excited to talk about. Get clear on your YouTube content structure, which also plays into that marketing funnel, and then optimize your existing content on YouTube to then fit into that funnel. So let's be real, <clears throat> right? YouTube is still a free way to be seen and get subscribers and grow a loyal audience. Like there are more than 2 billion monthly active users on the platform, billions of hours of content uploaded or minutes. I can't remember if it's minutes or hours, tons of content uploaded all the time uh, and tons and billions of views every day. This means that if you use it well, you'll have an engaged audience that's waiting to buy something from you, who is probably one of their favorite creators. And that's where Uscreen comes in, as launching your own video, stri stri video streaming site is going to give you a reliable revenue stream, greater overall income, more long-term and loyal viewers, a community, and control over your audience information, their email addresses, their payment information, which you can keep secure, all that good stuff. So let's hop into it. What's step one? Step one is to create your landing page. Did you know that the first impression of your website as a creator or any business is made within the first 50 milliseconds. That's tiny. That's a very small period of time. So we're going to give you some, some tidbits as to how to capture attention. It's half the time it takes you to blink one time. And we are all blinking a lot. The first impression is important. First things first, set up your landing page. Your landing page is a designated page on your video streaming site built into our YouTube 
or Ustream platform that you can link to in your video descriptions on YouTube and in your bio to send your most engaged viewers to. Not everybody is going to click that link, but the ones who really love you are. The purpose of the page is uh, to give you an easy to use page that you can drive high converting traffic to. People know exactly what action you want them to take when they get there. Share the benefits of your premium video on demand website and convert your YouTube leads into paying customers. You may even include some testimonials or some quotes from some of your, your, your community members on that page. So why do you need to have a high converting landing page? Here are some things that we'll recommend that your page includes. First, and definitely not least, the name and the logo of your video on demand service, which should be consistent with your YouTube's channel branding. It's all one business and it all should feel like one big brand altogether. A catchy tagline, a free trial sign up button, if that's something that you choose to use in your business, the benefits of subscribing to your video on demand membership. It could be in the form of a video trailer that may come very naturally to you, a product video, or just some written content, some bullet points that show people exactly why they should subscribe to your video on demand platform. An FAQ section, this can be a great place to kind of answer those big questions that people might have before they subscribe to you. A preview of your content catalog, what can they expect once they subscribe? What kind of videos are they going to get access to? Are they different from what we see on YouTube? Those kinds of things may come to mind for people who view this page. And of course, your pricing for your different plans and what may be included in each plan. Let's take a look at one of the landing pages that you could build with Uscreen. So to, this is one of our clients and customers, Lottie Murphy. She is a Pilates creator. You can see in this kind of screen through how she uses her landing page um, to showcase her pre premium video site. The page includes very clear branding. You can see it's all very consistent. A short written description is of what's available to you as a subscriber. You can see examples of her content catalog all throughout. It's a very visual page, testimonials, reviews, and her pricing plans, along with calls to action and buttons. She also has some apps. So you can see some, some call to actions to download her app there. And it makes her landing page a really comprehensive, engaging place to be, which entices potential customers and empowers them to make an informed decision. So anyone coming from YouTube is going to come over and be able to know exactly why they should be a member with Audie Murphy. I love that. <clears throat> so next, we're going to talk about switching to an abundance mindset. Now, I know that's kind of a maybe a woo woo type thing, um, but it's something I've seen play out in my own life this year. Actually, we sp I spent some time with a customer of ours in February, uh, Justin Rhodes, who is all about homesteading and his kind of theme of the last decade has really been moving from scarcity to abundance. Um, and, and that resonated deeply with me in the work that I'm doing because I've come from a, a world where maybe penny pinching or uh, going for the cheapest possible option was always, you know, what I went for or just thinking there wasn't enough to go around. And I've really been transitioning to more of an abundance mindset and believing that there's enough for everyone. There are enough views. There are enough subscribers. There are enough customers. And the numbers are there to support that. So that I would love it if you can just push forward in your mind. Like, what if I came at things from the mindset of there's enough? There's more than enough for me, for my competitors, for whoever, whoever it is, even if you don't like your competitors, which is totally fine and totally understandable. But there is enough. So if we look at this from the YouTube side of things, like almost 75% of the U.S. population uses YouTube and uses it regularly. Like my parents who are in their late 60s enjoy using YouTube. And my dad, there's a good chance my dad is lurking somewhere around here or will watch this replay. So he's probably going to call me about that. But they're in their late 60s and they love using YouTube. Like there are a ton of people on there. The platform has more than two billion monthly active users. Over 135 million people are watching streaming via the YouTube app on their TVs. It's a free platform to access. Although if you don't subscribe to YouTube premium, I think it's $12 a month. Honestly, I, I was very hesitant to do it. And then I started using it and I'll never go back. <laughs> $12 a month to not have to watch ads on YouTube was 
life changing for me. So just a little plug there. And actually, when you subscribe to YouTube Premium, a cut of that goes to creators uh, when you watch their content. So it's not like you're just paying YouTube and lining their pockets. Some of that goes to creators as well. Uh, more creators than ever have broken the 1 million subscriber mark. Like the pandemic was crazy for that. Uh, tons and tons of creators breaking 10,000 subscribers, 100,000 subscribers, a million subscribers. There are enough viewer views, subscribers, and customers to go around. It's just up to you to tap into it. YouTube is not out to get you as a creator. That's, an, that's what I would consider scarcity mindset, and I hear it all the time. YouTube is out to get me. Like YouTube wants to demonetize my content. Like they're going to kick me off the platform. There's a copyright strike. Like mm. that's not how it works. I know it may, it might feel like that. I have felt that tension and I've lived in that tension before, but YouTube is actually out to keep people on the platform as long as possible. That's all they care about because if they keep people on the platform, they get to serve more ads, which means more advertisers come in and spend money, which means YouTube makes more money. That is the end game for them. YouTube is out to keep viewers on the platform as long as possible. And it is your job as a YouTube creator to cater to that while then leveraging it to build an audience of your own. I'll get off my soapbox a little bit right now. Um, so everything you post on YouTube needs to have a clear goal to connect with a well-defined audience. Yeah, absolutely. And your YouTube content should provide value for your users, nurture your audience, grow your free online community. This is a great place to be able to um, hear from them and be able to bring people together, spark discussion and debate. It's always fun when a comment section goes off and people start talking to each other. Keep your viewers engaged, guide your audience through that marketing funnel in a really um, engaging and gentle way. It's not all salesy push, 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 which we'll get into a little bit later attract a potentially paying audience, become discoverable, which is a really big benefit of using YouTube as part of as part of your marketing for your business and educating people and helping to solve their problems. Because at the end of the day, that's what we all want is to create content that helps other people. Usually it's with something that maybe we have struggled with in the past. Um, and then to in, in ease that intimidation of what really should I be doing with, with YouTube? We've designed a YouTube to video on demand marketing funnel. And um, we're gonna help you start to approach that YouTube content and maybe a little bit of a different way so that you can turn that YouTube audience into a really sustainable long-term business. And we're gonna have you adopt this YouTube marketing funnel. So what is the YouTube marketing funnel and what is its purpose? Basically, I wanna just kind of level set and say like a marketing funnel is a way of looking at a customer journey from top to bottom when a potential customer gets to know you, their very first touch of ever seeing you online and becoming aware of your brand and your business to when they first um, buy something for you and possibly beyond. They may be mm, buying from you more than once over time. And this journey has stages, which we'll get into. Um, and they kind of work in this funnel mindset. So that's that's where that, that word comes from. They start at the top and they get to the bottom. It's specifically focused on that customer journey from YouTube into your video on demand business. And you can think of this in a multitude of ways. There's a lot of creativity within it. And we're going to kind of go through it. The YouTube marketing funnel is split into three stages. And this is really a pretty commonplace um, just marketing thing that we talk about is the top of the funnel, the middle of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel. It's super fun. We're able to say tofu, mofu and bofu, which are just fun words to use in every day. But um, it really goes from awareness into consideration into that purchase. And the main goal is to kind of gently push your target audience from the very top to the very bottom, all the way to being subscribers who are paying you hopefully on a recurring basis and able to provide you with that reliable income stream that we've been talking about. So let's dive a little deeper and look at each of these sta stages. So tofu, the top of the funnel, this is where your brand meets a new potential customer. You're creating tofu content that attracts new viewers, builds brand awareness, sets the tone for your channel, gives people a reason to watch future videos if it's not engaging or exciting or entertaining in some way. The chances of you losing people and they're kind of just watching one of your videos and then moving on becomes a lot more likely. So that's what this stage is all about is capturing attention, entertaining people enough that they would wanna continue to watch you, continue to subscribe to your channel 
and to generate leads that will trickle down into the next stage of the funnel. And we'll get into a little bit more of what exactly does that kind of content look like as we, as we get farther into this. Oh, did I go to, oh, that, that's what I wanted to, I couldn't remember which slide was next. Uh, okay. What type of tofu content would you, could you create for your subscribers? Which This is a great question for you all watching, but some of the types of content that work really well here are video listicles, um, topical vlogs, opinion pieces, simple tutorials, entertaining content, anything that kind of uh, has to deal with trending topics can work very well in the tofu stage. Like we've seen this playing out with the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial. Um, there's a YouTube channel. I saw it yesterday. I forget what the channel is called. It's something about law. But in the last 30 days, they've gotten like 700 million views from live streaming the trial. Uh, <laughs> and then producing, I think they're publishing like eight, somewhere between eight and 15 pieces of content per day. A lot of it being shorts of little clips from the trial, like the most impactful moments or the times that a witness said something ridiculous or whatever it is. Um, but trending topics like that can make for great tofu content as long as it aligns with the content you, you make, your niche, the, your value proposition. Like if there's a way to tie it in, perfect. If not, then it, it may not uh, work as well for you. So I'd love to know what kind of tofu content, <clears throat> excuse me, you could create for your subscribers in that vein. Um, the next step is MoFu, middle of the funnel. So this is where you spark begin to kind of spark interest in your paid content. The middle of the funnel is where people begin to engage with your content, where, where they begin to form concrete opinions about your brand and become an integrated part of your community. Your main marketing goal for the, this middle of the funnel stage is to keep people hooked on your content and then get to, them to move to the next stage of the funnel. This is when you start to see the, the YouTube marketing funnel in motion as these engaged viewers have gone from maybe binging your content at the top to saying, oh, I'm going to subscribe or I'm going to like the video or I'm going to leave a comment, which is even better because if you can get comments, that's that's not only a form of engagement, it's a form of like user research basically because they're telling you about themselves in the language they use, in the things they say, all that. So you can do this by creating MoFu content that educates people on your chosen topic, builds relationships with your subscribers, creates discussion, <clears throat> excuse me, discussion and community. Uh, gives viewers a taste of what your content can do for them, and it nurtures leads and trickles them down to that next stage of the funnel. This means that great MoFu content can be uh, tutorials, it can be breakdowns, or what I think works really, really well is live streams, um, Q and A's, or as uh, our friends STEM Media are saying, uh, interviews. Interviews are another great way to introduce. MoFu content. And that leads us to the bottom of the funnel. The bottom of the funnel where YouTube viewers become customers. That is the whole goal. Um, it's really this mindset switch of using YouTube, not as just your, your premium platform where everybody gets to watch everything, but as your marketing channel. And your main marketing goal for this BOFU stage is to seal the deal, to get people to actually go and click on that link and make a purchase with you. You've gotten your leads so far down the funnel with their free content. They became aware of you. They binged your content. They started engaging with you, liking, commenting. And this can happen on, on any channel. We're using YouTube, but it could also be happening with short form video on a social media channel if, if that's your, your choice. Um, so you've done that. You've gotten them through that funnel and now is your chance to promote your video on demand business. You don't want to do this all the time. It doesn't want to be promote, promote, sell, sell, sell. If, if you did that, it would probably turn off a lot of people. But now is the chance in this content to start to promote that. Um, and convince people to try your premium paid content. And there are a number of ways to do that. You want to be able to solve a specific problem with that content that is searchable or discoverable. That's where having people commenting on your videos and kind of giving you ideas as to what they need more of and what they need to learn, what questions they have can help you a lot. It can help you um, see those pain points in people who could be potential customers 
and be able to, to solve them. So viewers at this stage of your marketing funnel are ready to buy. They're weighing up their options. They are definitely thinking about it. They're thinking about um, maybe another subscription or something free or buying something in a physical store that can help them with that pain. And, and you're just one option. So they're waiting for a nudge from you to get them over that edge. Um, and it, it doesn't have to feel salesy when you do that. It's a next logical step. And when you approach that with a lot of empathy for those people, um, it can be really powerful. So viewers will have followed a very strong call to action, ideally in this bottom of the funnel to, to, to get to that landing page that we created before and found themselves on your video on demand site, which hopefully is optimized to, to make that sale. Yeah. And you can look to a few different types of content that might work best for your business business when it comes to bottom of the funnel content. What I think works really well here is uh, in-depth tutorials. So, you know, at the top, at the uh, top of the funnel or middle of the funnel, you might have like some lighter tutorials that kind of get people intro to your content and to your channel, but mm -hmm. in-depth tutorials where you're uh, picking a pain point and leaning into it and then helping people solve that can be great bottom of the funnel content. Product videos can be awesome. Video sales letters, which you see uh, often with course creators, they'll do like an hour long live stream where it just feels like an hour long sales letter, but it's also super valuable. So you're not mad that you're being sold to um, customer testimonials, great bottom of the funnel content and ultimately free trials. And when we look at free trials, like we can look at data from Uscreen's millions of end users, uh, and we can find that free trials convert viewers to paying subscribers at a rate of over 50%. Um, the st statistic we had a, a year or two ago was 52%. It looks like now that is actually higher uh, based on what our data team is finding. So if you want to increase the impact of your bottom of the funnel content, then offering a seven to 10 day free trial to get viewers to your video on demand platform to try it out to see if it works for them and then to stay and subscribe might be just what the doctor ordered. Okay. Um, and then in, if you want to kind of just do a, qu a quick summary, like top of the marketing goal for each stage is a little bit different. So the marketing goal for the top of the funnel is to get people hooked on your channel and on your content so much so that they take themselves to the, ne the next step of the funnel. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you can see those kind of content, those types of content I mentioned earlier, the marketing goal for the MoFu stage is to keep people hooked on your content and get them in like your comments, get them in your live chat, get them to like, get them to subscribe, which subscribers is ultimately kind of a vanity metric on YouTube, right? Like <clears throat> just because you have a million subscribers doesn't mean you're getting a million views on every video, but getting those play buttons from YouTube because you hit that mark is pretty great. But ultimately like that's just a vanity metric. What you really want is views and comments and likes Those Any of those engagement metrics are fantastic to get people to take in the middle of the funnel. And then the marketing goal of the bottom of the funnel is to convert quality leads or to get people to watch that bottom of the funnel content on YouTube and then get them over to your video on demand site. So you know the marketing funnel. Now I think it would be great if we can get clear on content structure, <clears throat> which is kind of the next logical steps. So by now you should have kind of a clear idea of how your YouTube content needs to be structured, right? Like uh, each video that you publish, and I'm guilty of not doing this, so please hear me out. Like I, I've, I've been there, I know exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> each video needs to have a clear purpose. I'm guilty of not doing that. But what's the goal? Is your goal with a video to reach more people? Is it a, to engage your existing community? Or is it to sell to your audience right now? You need to appeal to a single part of your mark, your YouTube marketing funnel with w each video. Like your video should not, if you go in thinking, hey, my video is going to be great for the top of the funnel, but some people might convert at the bottom of the funnel too. So I think it could hit both like that. You're setting yourself up to be unclear to your audience, right? So it's important that you think of each YouTube video you create as a part of this larger marketing strategy. So you should be able to answer these questions. Like what is the goal of the video? Is the goal to reach more people? Is it to engage people who are already there? Or is it to sell and get people to 
uh, opt into a lead magnet or get them to opt into a free trial or to just convert. Who does this video appeal to? And then where does it fit in my funnel? And then with that, that kind of begs the question of, okay, well, that's great. But if I've got tofu, mofu, and bofu, well, then how do I split my content among those three kind of uh, areas? Yeah, and that's a really great question. How do you split up? How do you decide how many bofu videos do I need to make versus how many tofu videos do I need to make? We have a pretty simple formula for you. It doesn't have to be exact, but we recommend kind of a, a larger amount of your videos are in that tofu mofu stage, and then the bofu is a little bit smaller. And it really goes along with the Gary Vaynerchuk approach, if you've ever followed him, of the jab, 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 right hook. And what that means is you're trying to kind of like gently nudge people, gently nudge people, and then kind of like really hit them with, with the sales pitch. Um, and you don't want it to all be right hook, right hook, right hook, because people these days really kind of bored pretty easily of those sales pitches. So we want to be clear that most of your content should entertain, engage people, and be in that know and like stage of the funnel. If you look at this funnel in another way, it can be tofu, mofu, bofu, or know, like, and trust. And when they really trust you is when they buy from you. But you need to you need to get someone to know you and like you before they're willing to trust you. It's a lot like dating, really. Um, it really is. Um, so you're going to give a lot of value. And when the time is right, you'll present your solution that helps them get even more value. And not everybody is going to follow every video that you create in that order. But likely you can create kind of a, a loop where people can get through a lot of that know and like content and then hit that that bofu content at the right time. Um, it allows you to emphasize the three important functions, generating awareness, engaging your existing audience and community and presenting them with a strategic sales opportunity and with that solution that they really need in their life. So every type of video should have a specific call to action. Um, not every call to action needs to be sales, but there should be clear calls to action throughout your content. So discoverable videos or tofu content should invite people to watch another video um, if you have other videos like that. Um, you want them to start binging your content. I know I am super guilty of being a major binger. This is probably my superpower in life. And uh, if you get people doing that, it's really easy to get them hooked or to influence them. I'm very guilty of being really susceptible to marketing messages. And most people are if, if they really like you. And your, mo your MoFu videos, those middle of the funnel videos should invite people to engage with you. Ask them to leave a content, a comment, share with you something in the comment section, like a video or become a subscriber of your channel. They're just more likely to kind of get more of your content at that time. And then the bottom of the fun funnel videos should always ask for the sale. Ask for them to get over to that landing page, invite people into that deeper relationship with you. You don't have to only offer people to buy from you or sign up for a free trial. Sometimes that might feel like too big of an ask. Um, the better option maybe is to get them onto an email list where you get their information and then you make the sale that way. You can offer um, a content upgrade or a free piece of content in exchange for an email address. Maybe you have like an exclusive video that you'll only give to people on your email list or a course that you've created or a worksheet or something that will really help them. A lot of times what happens is you get people into your into your email list by offering that. And maybe they never use that piece of content. Hopefully they do, but then you've captured them in another way. And so not only now, hopefully they're subscribed to your YouTube channel, but you've also got them on your email list. And maybe then from there, you can get them into your social media and you've kind of like really captured their attention um, on the internet. And then you nurture them along and um, it doesn't always have to be that hard sale. Sometimes it can be, but it all doesn't always have to be. So you kind of have to be strategic about your calls to action, but they're not always going to be like landing page, landing page, landing page. Be really strategic about it. Yeah, I love that. And I love that <clears throat> you mentioned the uh, Gary Vaynerchuk jab, 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 right hook, because I've been watching more boxing recently because of creators. <laughs> and like you, there is a method to the madness of a jab, 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 right hook, because yeah. you're when you, you, you use a jab, to maybe inflict some damage in a boxing match, but you're re what you're really doing is setting up your other punches. Okay. You're jabbing at people so that the opponent then starts to react a specific way. And if you see a pattern of how, this is how Jake Paul knocked out Tyrone Woodley. It's exactly what happened. He set up his jab because I, yes, I, I paid and I watched the fight. Okay, I like, I like boxing and I, I thought Jake was gonna get knocked out, but he didn't. Hey, but he set up the jab, the whole fight. 
And then he, like, I forget what round it was that it happened, but he threw the, he was fainting a jab as well. He fainted that jab and then came in with the right hook and knocked the guy out. And that's exactly what this kind of strategy aims for. And I know it seems counterintuitive that like 80% yeah. of your content on YouTube would not be selling, right? But like Tim Schmoyer posted a video on his channel recently, which is video creators. If you don't follow him, fantastic resource for growing on YouTube in general. But the video was kind of detailing a very, very, very similar structure to approaching YouTube is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that a, he had a client who was posting five videos a week. So if there's 20 days, 20 videos a month, he was selling, this client was selling in every single video and making, I think, $20,000 a month, which is fantastic. Tim came in and advised him, hey, let's spend 80% of your time focused on generating more views and engaging the community. And then we're going to sell one video a week. So four videos a month. And this, the first month, their sales went from 20,000 a month to 100,000 a month because they were providing more value and doing a better job of targeting their focused sales efforts. So I think that that's like, it might feel counterintuitive, but there's a method to the madness of nurturing those leads, jabbing them along. And then when time comes swinging with that right hook and, uh, knocking it out of the park. So let's talk about optimizing existing content, right? Because there's a good chance you probably have existing content and you want to look at each of your videos and decide, okay, is this top of the funnel content? Is this middle of the funnel or is this bottom of the funnel content? Um, which is a good question to ask. And then you can see if you can optimize because some videos like it's just it, probably a lost cause. To a, to a degree, like uh, I think Daryl Leaves, another great YouTube follow. If you don't follow him, it says uh, you, you, can, you can't polish a turd. That, that's his thing. Like sometimes you have videos that are turds and you, you don't need to go back and then deal with them. Just like just leave them in the gutter. Mm -hmm. But if there are videos that would benefit from being updated and there probably are, then you should look at it from this perspective of from the tofu stage, like if a video is getting decent views, but maybe the click through rate is lower. Okay. Let's revisit the thumbnail. Let's revisit the title. Are those optimized to bring in the most amount of traffic? Uh, if you have to add a CTA to it, like if it's going to get views and it's, you're not directing people to the next video, which you should, you should go back to those end screens and put the next most relevant, helpful video for your audience there to get them to watch another one. But if you can't, is there a way to get them on their mail on your mailing list? For middle of the funnel content with you want to focus on again community or engagement driven titles uh add cards to get people engaged in other content link them to your other content and encourage get them to comment like subscribe and i know that's hard on old videos but one of the things you can do that's low hanging fruit is go to the comments and if you've not left a comment on your own video do that and pin it to the top and if you have comments that you haven't responded to, go in and respond to those and keep the conversation going. So like if somebody asks you a question in the comments and you haven't answered, then you have an opportunity to not just answer, but to answer and keep that conversation going. Because you can go in and just answer, okay, this person asked A, let me give them B, the answer. And then that's the end of it. They go in, C, you respond, they're like, great. Or you can say, here's my answer, but what do you think about this? and keep that engagement going. And that's another thing that can kind of bolster those videos. And then bottom of the funnel content, uh, I think are really well served with search driven headlines, especially older videos that may not be getting recommended as much anymore on YouTube. So if you can optimize for search on those videos and get those videos popping up in Google searches or YouTube searches, you're gonna be in a much better position. If you can fix this, the call to action or if you can add uh, a call to action in the comments or in a pinned comment uh, mm -hmm. or in the description, that's fantastic. If you can add a landing page link to the description, perfect. If you have a link to a, a customer testimonial that you can add, even better. But going back and optimizing at each stage of the funnel, the, co the content that has that's still getting decent views and has the potential to serve you beyond just getting more views to your channel then I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you do that. Yeah, and all of those elements ultimately really bring us to this full 
full stage of this YouTube marketing funnel that we're talking about. That's it. We've shown you five steps to convert YouTube subscribers to your premium platform. And they all take some time. We definitely recognize that none of these are as simple as a snap, but hopefully these steps can help you if you're out there and you're feeling frustrated with YouTube or not getting enough of your YouTube subscribers into your paying platform, whatever your case, hopefully there's something in here that you can start to kind of turn a dial on and make some changes and really create that long-term sustainable business that you're looking for. So we've shown you how to create a landing page for your premium video streaming service that converts. Good news is, is when you come into the use screen platform, if you're not there already, we're always making changes and updates to our website builder and landing page builder so that you're able to really easily do that drag and drop and make things happen. Um, we've shown you how to switch to that abundance mindset with YouTube and why you need to do it. This is maybe the most important part of all of this. Wouldn't you agree, Daniel, that like you really start to see YouTube for what it can be and how much opportunity there really is out there for you. Even if there is someone out there doing super similar content to you, there is an audience for every everyone. There is more than enough to go around. So make sure that you're thinking of it that way and really thinking about what special, unique thing that you can bring to the table for people who really need you and your content. This, I think, is just a game changer, both in life and, and in, in creating a long-term sustainable business. The third is adopting that YouTube marketing funnel Tofu, mofu, bofu, no, like, and trust, however you want to think about it. Um, it's a really strategic way to think about um, your YouTube business. Um, getting clear on that content structure and your strategy, really important. And then optimizing your existing content or, exi or your content that you make in the future to fit into that marketing funnel. If you've already been creating a ton of content, now is a great time to take a pause and go back, do an audit, and optimize what you already have to start working for you um, and then continue into the future with that creation. So all of these elements combined help turn your YouTube subscribers into paying members with Uscreen and the numbers say it all. What can happen? That is what we're all here to figure out. Like what can happen when I start to adopt this? What happens when you convert only 1% of your followers to your premium content? paying maybe $10 a month. That's These are just arbitrary numbers. Maybe it's $20 a month. Maybe it's $17.99. There are a lot of options, right? But we can do the math and we can see if you have 25,000 subscribers on YouTube and you convert 1% of that, you have 250 times $10. That's 2.5K per month. Make that into a year. You're making $30,000 a year just by converting 1% of a 25,000 25, subscriber audience. If you have more than that, you can kind of do the math for yourself and start to see what can this business really look like. And maybe it's something that you're doing on the side of a full-time job. There's lots of options and lots of different people out there doing doing different things. But you screen creators are making an average of $12,000 a month, which is a very sustainable income for a creator. And that is what we're here to do is empower creators to really see the opportunity that they can create with something that they're passionate about. Our top earners are really making between $250,000 and $800,000 a month. The sky is a limit for how much creators can really do in the world. And that's just from this one revenue stream of creating this subscription or membership business with these screens. The numbers really speak for themselves. And if, if you feel convinced by that to really dive in, whether it's to make the decision to leap in to this whole business or just take a look at little pieces of the business that you've already created, we, we know that when you make these changes, you'll start to feel that come into your life. I love that. So I'm going to I'm scrolling back and going through questions we've been getting because we've gotten some good ones that I, I want to make sure to dig, to dig into. Greg said, great advice about YouTube. It's hard to generate YouTube tailored content at the, at the same time as creating you screen tailored premium content. A hundred percent. I, I feel that in my bones and I, I, I'm just creating content for YouTube mm -hmm. with, for you screen. Of course, there are other videos not on YouTube that I help create for the company, but I understand exactly what you're saying. So one of the ways to conquer that is to do what some of our more successful creators do, like Sarah Beth Yoga, who create, she has a specific, she created a specific system for how she creates and publishes content. Yoga flows of 30 minutes or less 
go on her YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. If she creates a yoga flow that's longer than 30 minutes, it automatically goes only on her premium video on demand site. The, but every video she publishes on YouTube also goes on her video on demand website. And she positions that as a value add for, for her members because it, it's not like she's adding content all the time. I think she actually only films a few times a year, to be honest. She does very large batches a few times a year, but she publishes all of that YouTube content on her paid membership platform and tells people, hey, this content is from YouTube, but it's ad free on my platform now. I, I, and she's taken out all the calls to action because all of her YouTube videos have a call to action to sign up for her mailing list. Mm -hmm. So she removes that. She removes uh, any mention of like trying to sell people anything or anything like that and adds that to her membership site, which is a, a great way to do that. So she's not uh, having to create mutually exclusive pieces of content. So I think that, uh, Greg, that could be one approach worth considering. I know every scenario is different. Everything is unique. Um, but that's one way to tackle that problem. Absolutely. Repurposing is such a great way to think about content. It doesn't always have to be like, I'm creating, 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 and on this hamster wheel, you can think about how can I uh, add one thing to our premium membership? Maybe you add a live stream, but the, the rest is just really nicely organized content that they could find on YouTube. There are a lot of yep. ways to think about that, but we don't want you to feel like you can't do both. It's about getting really creative with it. Yeah. And then he, he mentioned again, I feel like I feel compelled to, to create for my paying audience mm -hmm. and never really get around to my YouTube community. Totally understand. Another another way to approach that is using your premium content and cutting a shorter version of that for YouTube. Yeah. Like, hey, here's five minutes of this video. If you want the full version, you've got to go. You can check it out on my my um, my video on demand site. We see that all the time with mm -hmm. I know I've seen it with dance videos quite a bit, like dance tutorials will be like two minutes of the person teaching a dance choreography. And then it'll be like, if you want the rest of this, make sure to sign up for your free trial or whatever it is. That's another way that you can approach it is tease your content on YouTube. Um, an another way to do low hanging fruit on YouTube, I think is super underrated is live streams. Mm -hmm. I love live streams when you don't have a big audience like the numbers that show up are going to be small but that just means more intimate connections with fewer people are possible mm -hmm. uh and i think it is very 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 underrated and like you can go live on youtube from your phone you can go live on youtube from your laptop wherever it is like you it doesn't have to be this big produced thing you can just tell people hey i'm gonna go live we're gonna do a hangout uh one of my favorite creators technically t he does stuff all about phone cases and phone tech but every monday night he does a live stream and it's just like hanging out and people just come they don't come because he's gonna, gonna talk about phone cases they come because they like hanging out with him and just shooting the, the you oh, know what uh which i love and i think it's very 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 undervalued uh stem media asked practices for placement of you screen landing page link in and around our youtube videos most viewers don't reach the end cards of youtube videos any data based on optimized CTA link placements on YouTube? Jamie, do you have anything on that or you want me to dig into it? That's a great question. I don't know if we have any data on the most optimized place, but there are a number of places that you can then place it. Maybe you have a call to action right in the beginning or you tease to people like, hey, stick around to the end. Also put that link in the description for sure. Those are a few kind of like low hanging fruit definitely should do it. I wouldn't necessarily probably wait all the way to the end of your video for the first call to action. Maybe after you can look at your YouTube stats and see like how long are typically people watching my videos and stick one right there where it makes sense for them to see that. What do you think about that, Daniel? Yes, 100%. Uh, one of the best things I, I see people do is they make their most important link the first link in the description. Mm -hmm. uh, often people get uh, caught up in like, I have to search optimize my description, which for the right kind of content, sure. But like if you put your link first and somebody goes to look at the description, they can immediately find what they're looking for. Like the person who wants to find that link and you're reducing that friction makes the click so much easier. Or if you put like a sentence yeah. or two to introduce and then in your video, you say first link in the description is the link that you're looking for to go to my site or whatever it is. Like highly recommend that. I know it's tough to get people to stay to the end of a video, mm -hmm. but it's worth considering that like if your average retention rate is 50%, which is 
good. Like the top freaks of YouTube, like Mr. Beast get like 80%, which is insane. But if you're a normal person and you're getting 30, 40, 50% retention on your videos, the people that are making it to the end are probably the ones that are going to be interested in clicking that link anyway. So if you're not including those links because you're like, no one's watching anyway, I would highly encourage you to put them there anyway. You can yeah. add a link to your end screen. Uh, you can have a call to action at the end of your video telling people to check out a link in the description. Whatever it is, wherever you place it, make sure it's very clear and people know where to find it and how to like, how to get there because there are people that are going to watch the end of your videos and those are the ones who are best positioned to click those links and get the results. Yeah, so, um, and then they asked, did Daniel say the other YouTubers advice was to switch to four videos per week or four videos per month? So they were doing 20 videos a month. So five videos a week. Uh, and they were selling in all 20 videos. So five videos a week, they were including a sales call to action. And the switch was to go from five videos a week that were selling to one video a week that, that's selling. So ultimately that's four videos a month is what that, that uh, recommendation was. Um, let's see. Can older videos be reposted after updating them? Uh, if you're talking about on YouTube, Mm-hmm. probably not um you with older videos if if it's still getting good views like hundreds of views or thousands of views a month and it's like a, a year old like you can go, go in and make some optimizations to that if you want like making sure there's a clear call to action or clear link for people to click in the description uh but updating and reposting is probably not gonna do well because youtube analyzes every frame of every video and so if they see that like if there's a pattern that you're updating videos and reposting like it eventually it's going to learn and be like oh well people have already seen that like i just don't think that there's a whole lot of upside to doing that and it's a, like i said it, it, don't spend time polishing a turd i didn't say that daryl eve said that but i'm just re rephrasing or requoting from him yeah uh Let me see. What other questions do we have in here? Are people, somebody asked, are people earning that amount from YouTube? I'm not sure which amount you're referring to, uh, but in general, YouTube monetization is uh, a nice to have, but it's, it's never going to be consistent or predictable enough for the vast majority of creators to be a sustainable monthly recurring income. There are some who are getting hundreds of thousands a month or tens of thousands a month in AdSense revenue, in which case they can, but the vast majority of creators are not at that level. So what we're advocating for is off platform monetization. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Can you repeat the YouTubers you mentioned that have great advice? Yes. Video creators is one. That's the name of the channel. Tim Schmoyer. Uh, I'll put links in the description of this video after after we're done linking to Tim's channel. So video creators is one. The other is Daryl Eves. Uh, Daryl Eves has done consulting for many big YouTubers, uh, Mr. Beast, Mark Rober, real big names. Uh, and you spell his name kind of funny. It's D-E-R-R-A-L. If you type that in, you're going to find him on YouTube. So those two are great. I've learned so much from them and highly recommend Somebody asked, could a live stream be a class? I love Jamie, this what do you question. Think? I love this question because it, it looks like it's from somebody who's doing some fitness content. And fitness has been a huge part of my career to this point. I was actually working at a, a rather large fitness franchise right when the pandemic hit. And we were live streaming classes, or we called them camps, daily. All the time we were live streaming, and it was a huge value add. So absolutely, 100%. Um, that is a great way to get fitness people to understand like what is the real offering here? They want to experience it for themselves and having that live interaction is super fun. There's a lot of different creative things you can do to, to pull people into your live stream who are doing the class at home or have somebody engaging with people in the comments, provide a lot of hype. Definitely recommend thinking through like what does your set look like and is it not is it not too busy because you want people to really focus on the exercise and get that value from it. Um, but 100%. Definitely do that. Love that idea. Love it. Uh, Extreme Hip Hop asks, in Uscreen, when we create landing pages, can we use more than one for different CTAs? We have two programs. Yes. Yes. 
Yes, you can create multiple landing pages. I would advocate for that. I think mm -hmm. every landing page should have one clear goal. One and that's it. So if you've got if you want people to sign up for one program, create a landing page for that. If you want to sign up for a separate one, create a separate landing page for that. If you want to uh, generate emails for your email list, have a separate landing page for that. But like one landing page, one goal is yeah. a great, great rule of thumb. Absolutely. Like a website in general should feel more like a storefront where somebody can learn all about you and kind of get to where they need to go. But a landing page is a single function. You want it to serve one purpose and one purpose only, which is for somebody to do the action that you want when they get there, whether it's signing up for your email list or purchasing that one plan, um, whatever it is, make sure that all the content on that page really speaks to that one call to action. It will be a lot more powerful. Awesome. Uh, what is this yoga site you mentioned? I mentioned Sarah Beth Yoga, uh, S A R A H Beth Yoga. Um, Sarah Beth is a longtime Uscreen customer, and they have a great funnel. Um, yes. The way that she's very clear and distinct about how her content is structured, and like thirty minutes or less goes on YouTube. Anything over that length goes on her premium site. Everything on. YouTube is on her premium site with no ads, no calls to action, all that. And they're actually fantastic at email marketing as well. Like mm -hmm. if you're, if you feel like your email marketing is lacking, sign up, get on their email list and just watch. It's, Absolutely. I won't say it's a masterclass, but they do the gap between your video on your, your YouTube channel and your video on demand site is bigger than you think. Mm -hmm. Like there are raving fans who are like, they watch your content and they're like, heck yes, I love this creator. I'm going to go sign up for their membership because I love them so much. Yeah. And then there's a large chunk of people who can be convinced, but they need you to hold their hand and show them the way. And so for them, like a great email marketing uh, sequence is the way to go. And Sarah Beth, the way that they do that is phenomenal. Like mm -hmm. the, you get to know Sarah Beth's personality and her approach to yoga um, and what her programs are like and what you can expect in the in the span of just a few emails over a few days in a way that like it answers objections. Um, it overcomes people's hesitations. It shares customer testimonials from like their community who are raving fans of her content. Like if you need some email marketing inspiration uh, for getting people from YouTube to your video on demand site, that's a great one to learn from for sure. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Let's see, we tease our video on demand content in our YouTube releases. Since we started releasing two videos a week, our views and engagement has drastically dropped. Is there a better approach than just teasing the content? That's a good question. Um, I feel like this is one where I need to look at the channel to understand what you mean about teasing your content. Um, this is a really good question. Um, we actually have a Facebook group that this question would be perfect for. You can ask us this question and we can converse with you right there. And I think that you'll get a lot of advice from that community about exactly the things that you can do to increase that engagement again. Um, because I think that we probably need to dive into that a little bit deeper to give you a really good good answer. But um, maybe it's just the approach to the releases. Maybe they're not providing enough value and, and we could... Um, our community will dive into that with you and definitely help you make that a little bit better. That link is right on the screen if you want to join. Yes, yes. It's. I actually have learned a lot being in that group. I take screenshots all the time of like <laughs> things just for my own personal reference of things that I'm learning. I'm like, I need to come back to this and take notes. So I highly recommend checking out the Uscreen uh, Insiders Facebook group. Um, let's see. What would be a good publication frequency on YouTube if YouTube if you're an SVOD platform? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, it's so subjective. I, yeah. I, I know that's a terrible answer, but it's subjective because you have to know your own limits in creating content right. and and not push yourself to the point of burnout because like it I know it's a maybe a buzzword, but it's a real thing. Like if you push there's a reason that like I don't my personal YouTube channel is not a million subscribers it's mm -hmm. because 
I've spent three, base almost three years with Uscreen, just pouring everything I have into YouTube for Uscreen, and to then go home at the end of the day and do more. Like I know that that would result in being burnt out and frustrated and just fried to a crisp. And so I don't want that for you. So I think it's less about finding a good publication frequency for YouTube and more of finding what's the pace that's sustainable for you. Um, because ultimately like Mark Rober, huge YouTuber, he's the one who's done like the glitter bomb pranks for people, people who steal packages and stuff like very science oriented. He publishes maybe one video a month and gets millions of views. So yeah. that you can do that. Or there are people who publish multiple videos a day, but it's ultimately what's sustainable for you and your content. So I would lean more so into that rather than trying to tell you, Hey, here's a rule of thumb. I mean, one video a week is great, but if you can't do that and you can only do one every two weeks or one a month, it's going to be okay. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. It's about consistency more than it is about what is the right schedule because there really isn't a right one. It's if you can keep up with it for a long period of time, then it's good. Yes, 100%. All right. So if you're ready to dig into you screen, if you're ready to convert your YouTube audience into paying subscribers with a killer platform, all the links will be in the description of this video. Um, you can go to youscreen.tv. Click. Thanks, Jamie. Sorry, y'all. Oh, wow. That just kept going. <laughs> All the links to Uscreen are here. Uscreen.tv. Click free trial. You can start a 14-day free trial um, or get in touch with our amazing support team if you want to talk about apps. Uh, we would love to help a creator just like you uh, to empower you, to help you get creative, to help you make more money. Um, and again, if you are interested in our Uscreen Insiders group, highly recommend checking that out. Uh, otherwise, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for the amazing questions. Jamie, thank you for joining. It's always thank great you. to have you. I don't know if you have anything else you want to add before we sign off. No, we're just so grateful for your attention. Um, if you have questions that you want to keep asking them, you can leave them in this comments and we'll come back and check those out or join that Facebook group, the Uscreen Insiders, and you will find a plethora of amazing people who are ready to help and who want to build up creators just as much as we do. So thank you so much. And thanks, Daniel, for having me. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week.